In the ongoing culture wars that are engulfing governments across the Western world, many politicians simply use phrases such as woke, cancel culture and freedom of speech to rile up their bases or vilify their opponents. While such attitudes are rarely translated into policies, in the UK, Boris Johnson's government has recently introduced the Higher Education Freedom of Speech Bill, a piece of legislation squarely aimed at stopping quote-unquote woke cancel culture at universities and protecting freedom of speech at universities in law. So, in this video, we'll have a look at exactly what the bill changes and whether this is good for universities and students' unions. If you want more from TLDR, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and our sister channels. You can even subscribe to TLDR Daily to get a rundown of the day's five biggest stories in five minutes. All of those are linked below. According to the government, the bill will essentially do three things. Number one, allow the Office for Students to enforce freedom of speech at higher education institutions. Number two, introduce a complaint system for breaches of free speech duties by higher education institutions. And number three, extend freedom of speech to students' unions. But what do each of these mean in real terms? And what needs to happen before this bill becomes actual law? Let's start with the first part of the bill, Freedom of Speech Enforcement, which will amend the Higher Education and Research Act of 2017, inserting a new part at the very beginning of the bill. This new amendment states that higher education bodies have the responsibility to protect freedom of speech for staff, students and anybody else. Now, while this may actually seem quite vague on the surface, the bill does actually go into some detail about what this means and how people can raise objections. In section A1.11 of the Act, the government defines what freedom of speech actually means. They state that freedom of speech includes the freedom to express ideas, beliefs and views without suffering adverse consequences. As part of freedom of speech, the bill defines academic freedom, this is the ability to question and test received wisdom and to put forward new ideas and controversial or unpopular opinions without loss of their jobs or privileges at the university. As the explanatory notes of the bill explains, part of the reason the government introduced this act is because in recent years there's been a small number of reports of students who are attempting to shut down legitimate freedom of speech under the banner of safe spaces and no platforming. This is why the bill makes specific references, to effectively make the right to freedom of speech extend beyond simply academics, but also to anyone that was at any time invited to be a visiting speaker. But simply giving universities extra responsibility to enforce freedom of speech issues would not be particularly productive if it didn't also introduce some system of complaint or recourse. That's why Section 4 and Section 8 respectively introduce the ability for individuals who feel they've been let down by a university in this regard the right to launch a civil claim and complain to the Office for Students. Section 4 gives people the right to file civil proceedings against a university if they breach any of the freedom of speech rules outlined earlier. So, controversial speakers who have been deplatformed will be able to actually take action against universities, as will academics who question gender norms, and as will students who espouse unpopular opinions. Moreover, Section 8 actually gives such people even more power, the power to launch a free speech complaint through the Office for Students. Now, most of you probably don't know what the Office for Students is, which is fair, it's not really that exciting. It was established back in 2017 in the Higher Education and Research Act, and its main aims were to help students to get into higher education, to represent the interests of students at university, and generally to help students stay informed. So basically, while it has some responsibilities, it doesn't have that much power. Now though, if individuals feel that their freedom of speech hasn't been respected, they can launch a complaint through the Office for Students who also subsequently have the power to decide whether such a complaint is justified. The Office for Students then has the power to make recommendations to the university in relation to the complaints. 
The bill specifies that this can include the payment of sums specified in the recommendation, although it does then go on to say that the scheme may not authorise the Office for Students to require anyone to do or not do anything. So, people have two avenues they can go down in relation to complaints about freedom of speech at universities. But what if their complaint relates to the activities of a student's union? Well, the bill basically establishes that students' unions have the same responsibility to defend freedom of speech as the university itself. Both of the routes for complaint are open to students, academics and guests at the university, and the Office for Students is able to make recommendations and issue fines. Additionally, the Secretary of State can actually intervene if they think the Office for Students isn't doing its job properly. In effect, there is ministerial oversight. The point here is that not only do universities have to be more accommodating of different views and attitudes now, so too do students' unions. While universities may have departments and teams dedicated to ensuring that they are compliant with regulations, students' unions are often smaller and are now having to walk the line between being fined for allowing hate speech and protecting freedom of speech. Moreover, even if the Office for Students is happy that the union is compliant, the relevant government minister could overrule this. So, while the government has been stoking the culture war fire, it seems that they are now starting to actually legislate on it too. While some will argue that this bill will ensure academics and students are able to think and speak freely, and guests no longer need to worry that their invitations are going to be revoked, Others will argue that it puts universities and students' unions in a difficult place, where they have to make potentially very expensive judgments on what constitutes hate speech and what constitutes an expression of freedom of speech. So, this is what the bill would do if it made its way to the statute book. But how close actually is it to becoming law? Well, it's cleared the House of Commons already and is currently working its way through the House of Lords. It's in the committee stage right now, and once it's cleared this, all it will need to get through is the third reading. To be quite frank, it would be remarkable if the bill didn't become law. The House of Commons pulls rank, and there's no indication that the House of Lords won't approve it anyway. So it seems that universities may be having to deal with freedom of speech complaints very soon indeed. Let us know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for more TLDR news. To make sure you never miss a thing, you ought to check out our TLDR EU, Global and US channels.